Me. You see, no, I Welcome to Shoujo and Tell, where we discuss shoujo manga and tell who's hot and who's not, talk about themes, and just generally geek out. Today, December 28th, 2022, we'll be Shoujo and Telling about the series Alice 19th by Yu Watase. I'm your host, Ashley McDonald, and I'm joined by the host of the podcast Shoujo Sunday, uh, Chika Supreme. Hi! And Gianna Luna. Hey! Can y'all tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words? Sure! Um, yeah, so... Shoujo Sunday is a podcast that is dedicated to recapping shoujo anime um, because we feel that it deserves more recognition than what it currently receives. And, you know, Gianna and I just started podcasting actually this year in 2022, and it's been a really fun ride just going over different shows, but then at the same time working with a lot of people. We've had the chance to work with many different artists, uh, like our friend Jello Plum, her name is Sam, Hartha, Marissa Ryan, she's the manga, should I say mangaka? Because she creates webcomics, but she creates a webcomic called Shining Star that's coming back, which is awesome. So we worked with her and Pida and Jem, they created our theme song. But yeah, so we've just had fun being able to have the chance to look at different shoujo anime and use ice cream puns to sort of analyze like what we like, what we dislike, what we're iffy about. I feel like that's us sort of in a nutshell. I've definitely looked at your art and been like, gosh, you guys put so much effort into this. Like, it's so hardcore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Do you have anything to add, Gianna? Man, Chica really summed it up. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just uh, one right. half of Shoujo Sunday. So. <laughs> like, no, that's my identity. You could say more. No, like, Gianna's amazing. Uh, she, like, founded the podcast. She's a dueling pianist. So cool. She plays, like, multiple instruments. She's a singer. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. I yeah. That's what I. Outside of podcasting, I I I'm a dueling pianist full time. So, yeah. I'm I'm all into. I use my voice a lot. Is basically, I guess, the gist of it. <laughs> you were like singing, podcasting. Yeah, that goes together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, t- as I said, today we're here to talk about Alice Nineteenth by Yu Atase. So this beginning section will be as spoiler free as possible you know we're humans we make mistakes um so we will try to talk about this at a very high level uh just like the plot our general feelings about the series before we dive into it all more deeply and i will give the listeners a spoiler warning probably in 10 to 15 minutes all right so let's get into it so would one of you like to give a plot synopsis of alice 19th i would say gianna should take it away okay oh i'll do my best with these names okay (laughs) So, our plot synopsis for Alice 19th goes as follows. Alice Sino, a seemingly normal girl in high school, is in love with a boy named Kyo Wakamiya, who is in the archery club with his sister, Mayora Sino. While walking to school, she encounters a mysterious rabbit in the middle of the street. She saves it from being hit by a car, while Kyo saves Alice from being hit as well. We later learn that the rabbit is a girl named Neozika, who introduces Alice to the sublime power of the Lotus Words. After Alice and Mayora get into an argument about Kyo, Alice wishes for Mayora to disappear, and Mayora is accidentally sent to the world of darkness. Joined by an assortment of new Lotus Master friends, including Kyo, Alice sets out to save her sister from the darkness that enveloped her, and is attempting to take over the world at large. Casual. Cas- casual. <laughs> no, no big deal, really. <laughs> no big deal, really, yeah. Uh, it doesn't escalate from, you know, petty high school stuff to be like, uh, the whole world will be destroyed if you don't uh, figure your love triangle out. This is cool. All right. <laughs> all right, so I wanted to set a base level of, like, what our familiarity is with this series. Uh, so I definitely read this so many years ago, like half my life ago. 
Mm -hmm. uh, as it was coming out in English in like 2003 or 2004. The last time I would have possibly read it would have been 2008 because I, I borrowed it from a friend in high school. So, you know, I was 18. So it's definitely been over 15 years. And I was like, I super don't remember anything when I started reading this. And then I hit volume four and I was like, oh, actually, like, I distinctly remember some things that happened in this volume. Like when they happened, I was like, right, this. Ooh, oh, oh, goody. So that was, that was, that a, was bit a bit of fun. Of fun. And yeah, my friends and I were just like really into Watase in high school, very, very formative experience. So <laughs> I know at this time that Watase started creating a lot of things. So I just want to like clarify for the people out there. When I when I tried to quickly look at when all Watase stuff was was publishing, it appears that it was like Alice 19th is after Imadoki and before Absolute Boyfriend. Um, so they kind of maybe overlapped a little bit with Genbu Kaiden as well. Um, and it ran concurrently to the series called Apare Jipangu, which is has never been translated in, into English as far as I know. So Alice 19th also started a few months before 9-11, which is mentioned multiple times by Watase. And we will discuss that later because I think it has an influence on the story. But mm -hmm. like, it's clearly not how Watase initially like formulated the story. Um, yeah, so Chica, what's what's your familiarity with this story? Yeah, so um, I purchased the volumes like probably in 2005 or 2006 because um, that was in and around the time where I became super passionate about anime and manga in general. So I had first bought like the Inuyasha anime manga and then I bought Fushigi Yugi because it just looked interesting. Like, I just liked the cover. And after that, I was entirely obsessed <laughs> with Watase. So it was just like, okay, Fushigi Yugi. Oh, wait, there's Alice 19th. There's Imadoki. So I think out of, like, all of Watase's, like, series that have been licensed in English, the only ones that I don't have in my collection is Absolute Boyfriend and errata but i have everything else oh my gosh i have errata and i'm like i regret having errata just because of how messy that publication has been i'm like what's biz gonna do do you know that she's like redoing chapters like from volume 15 on watase is like redoing chapters i'm not surprised <laughs> it's, it's, i'm like this is a mess <laughs> i just it's so long and not finished and a mess and i'm like okay great <laughs> yeah yeah so that's my my errata thoughts <laughs> yeah yeah but I I mean I wanted to get into it but I was just like you know what like it's fine like when I think in my head I was like when it's done then I'll get all of it <laughs> so that played I into think my it's supposed to happen soonish <laughs> I don't know yeah, and we'll is picking back up Biako Senki Yes, finally. Yes, finally. Yes, that's that's the conclusion to that. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. It's like I I have kind of I'm just I want all of them. So it's like, come on, what task you can do it? Like I'm it's always looking at her tweets and stuff. She always tells people what she's eating on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, you're healthy. I saw what you ate. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like you can draw a page of Fiaco right now. Like. Come on. Yeah. But yeah, so I've just been in love with Latase and her like art style and writing style. And I think the last time I reread Alice 19th was probably in like 2012 or 2013. But yeah, like this time around, it was so interesting, like, you know, seeing her reference to not only like 9-11, but the Lord of the Rings, uh, Atlantis. Yeah. Like, Such I was just like, wow. The author's notes literally start off with Watase being like, 9-11 just happened. And I was like, this is such an escalation <laughs> from the yes. start. Page like 50. Like, calm down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But Gianna, what's, what's your familiarity with uh, Alice 19? So um, what I always like to tell people is that the rock I live under is very heavy. So... <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm still kind of like an anime and manga noob, which is the part of the reason why I started podcasting, because it's something I'm so interested in, but have only really dipped my toes in the water of. 
So I had never heard of Alice Nineteenth before, and she could kind of toss it out as a suggestion to maybe cover with you. And I thought that the concept sounded interesting, so I was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's give it a go." Because my my only other <laughs> my only other experience with Watase's work is that somebody gifted me Absolute Boyfriend a long time ago, and it took me until a few years ago to read it, which is um, it's definitely different from this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i'm sorry that was that 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 was your first watase experience <laughs> i i appreciate that that's healing for me to hear <laughs> yeah well i'm curious since uh you know you do anime have you watched fishigi Yugi before i own it yes oh my gosh yeah i mean fishigi Yugi was like so formative for me <laughs> It just it, right in the cusp because it's like I was getting I was getting the manga and then I was just like, wait, do they have an anime? And then they did. And so I just have a distinct memory of like my eldest sister and her then boyfriend giving it me for Shugi Yugi, like the anime for Christmas. And I like wore those DVDs out. I was just like, oh, my gosh, the drama. Meanwhile, I probably was a little too young. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the experience for me as well. <laughs> All right, back to Alice Nineteenth, I guess. So let's just briefly discuss like our favorite aspects of the series or why others should read it. I do admit that I I think the first two volumes are really clunky, and when I was reading it, I was like, "Why did I like this as a child?" <laughs> mm. But then once it in volume like three or four, it like hits its stride and keeps, it's not as frenetic and it kind of just keeps you with the same characters and is like, here is the central plot. And I'm like, yes, thank you. I'm here. Let's go. Melodrama all day. I'm, I'm, <laughs> let's, we're, I'm good. <laughs> like, you know, I'm here for it. Watase, yeah. let's go. I love you. That's good. <laughs> um Gianna what do you what do you think yeah no I would say I definitely agree I was kind of confused just being dumped into the universe at first but that love triangle man like it really starts to take off when they're setting that up like once that takes shape I think there's some really great exploration of emotions and emotional maturity in this story and I honestly think it would benefit everyone reading it to learn kind of like how to look inward and not to sink too deeply into negativity yeah for sure I I definitely think I'm like I like I don't think it pushed quite hard enough for me, but I was like, it's a good message, executed pretty well. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, not perfectly, but very well, I would say. Yeah, I was like, lacking like some nuance, but that's okay. Yeah. It's it's only seven volumes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, Chica, what about you? Um, I would say, you know, what I really loved – um, I think I like this just in general with Watase's work, but I love the comedic reactions by the different characters. Like when something alarming would happen and then like Neo Zico would just be like straight face, like explaining the situation. And they're just like, oh, my gosh, like eat gag. Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it just sort of felt as if like she was adding in honestly like the audience response within like these comedic reactions to certain situations so I I love that and then at the same time I also just like the constant encouragement of everyone speaking like their truths whether it hurts someone or not and like you know if you're speaking from the heart then it will reach that other person yeah it's a it's a cute series uh you know Kyo aka not Tom Home. You know, yeah. he's, a, he's a hot, not Tom Home. <laughs> he is. He is. And I honestly think that we get some pretty good, diverse representation. Again, doesn't go hard enough for me, but there are certain aspects about it. Like, we get pretty diverse characters because we get a character from Norway and the US and like China. And I was like, you know, it's, this is nice. And again, Watase's notes kind of bring out how I say she so. I know that Watase is ex-gender, and it's very confusing. Uh, but, but, so I've just been trying to say Watase every, like, reference. But yeah, Watase knows very, make it very clear that whenever they come to the U.S., you know, they're just like, everything about America is so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the movie theater is so cool. <laughs> it's just like, okay. Uh, yeah. So I think that comes from a genuine place of, like, we live in a cool, globalized uh, society, and 
maybe a bit of negativity towards Japan itself. I don't know. But also she was like, I made Kyo to be the ideal Japanese boy that I like. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just love that she added, you know, different perspectives and people from different places, which also I wanted to like, I should touch on this. Well, not should, but she tweeted me like last month. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yes. So um, Japan right now, like they have, they got this film from India. It's called RRR. It's on Netflix right now. And they have been marketing it because it's supposed to be in the Oscars race. Um, and so she saw the film. And so I was just like, oh, I just ha- I have so much joy from seeing like her excitement about the film. Uh-huh. And so normally, like, you know, Watase, she she just tweets in Japanese, but she responded to me in English. I was so I was so excited. Now, oh. she probably thought that I was from India. I'm not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but she was like so excited, like about the film. And it, she talked about how she wanted to go visit India for the first time in like a couple of years and stuff and I was just like oh yeah and so I was like vibing with her I was like oh yeah you know like I went like in 2016 it was great like you should go (laughs) oh Oh, man that sounds good Uh, apparently I need to stalk you watch us anymore I don't know (laughs) right just Just like to all the tweets yeah yeah Like, I don't know, maybe she'll just be, like, because I've replied to different tweets. I just think she was so excited about RRR that she's like, I will talk in English for this. <laughs> I'll talk in English for this, yeah. I love that in one of her author's notes, she was like, I went to Raleigh, North Carolina for a con. I was like, what? <laughs> Raleigh? <Yes. laughs> North Carolina? That's so strange. Anyway, I just, Watase's life is fascinating to me is, I guess, the conclusion of that. <laughs> um, I'm really interested in her thoughts about, like, America as well. Yeah, yeah. I have so much, if I could talk to Watase, I'd have so many questions, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. So if you're intrigued about Alice 19th and you haven't read it before, it's available in English physically and digitally from Viz Media's Shoujo Beatline. Physically, it might be a bit difficult to obtain, but what isn't these days? Pandemic. All right. So now on, we're definitely going to spoil things like stuff that happens in the final volume. Fair game. So if, if you don't, if you have, if you don't know the story and you want to, like pause, come back later, or don't. And if you don't care, like keep going. Let's go. So we're going. So first, we'll start by talking about the characters. And their their connections. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously we have to start with Alice, the titular character. Alice is one of those character types that I'm like, is this realistic to people? Like, they're so nice and timid that everybody makes fun of them. I'm like, is that a real archetype? Right. Yeah. It just doesn't right. seem like... I don't know. It just seems like the opposite. You know, why would you make fun of somebody for that? Just like having a quieter personality. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think Alice is sort of depicted as, you know, she's non-confrontational. She wants everything to sort of be equal or balanced. But I feel like at a certain point, if people are bullying you, like you're going to lash out. Like, it wouldn't take having, like, a magical rabbit to be like, (laughs) stop talking to me like that. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I feel like at least you would get upset. Like, I don't know. I definitely remember distinctly, like, being a camp counselor and having uh, one of the the, campers wanted to hang out with these too cool for school girls who were like mean to her and we kept being like you know you could just not hang out with them because they're mean to you uh but no it always just was like them bullying her eventually and I'm like but then she would cry you know so I was just like I feel like just eventually you cry Alice isn't that strong you know in my my perception (laughs) yeah no I, I totally agree 
And like, she's nice and everything. And so her darkness, because this is, everybody has darkness and light within them, but you know, darkness is more tempting and bad (laughs) and all of those things. Yeah. So the breaking point for Alice, I think is what we're saying, is that, you know, so what kicks off the plot of the story is that Alice's older sister has a crush on the same boy as Alice. So her sister's name is Myura. And Myura finds that out and is like, hey, like, why are you trying to steal my now boyfriend? And they get into all these fights. And eventually Alice is like, I wish that you would disappear. And so she does. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And Alice has some regrets about that because then... Myra is like a vessel to destroy the world, and that's not great. Yeah. Right. Probably the last thing she thought would happen when she was just speaking out of anger. Yeah, she's like, well, that escalated quickly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, talk about one to ten. <laughs> yeah. And I guess I would want to talk about like their sibling dynamic, because actually the friend that I borrowed this podcast from in high school was one of three children. and was the youngest so she kind of was the one bullied by her older sister and I was like did this really resonate with her a lot actually (laughs) like it seemed very realistic on all points except you know getting sucked into literal darkness that's different right I mean I'm a youngest I'm a I am a youngest yes um I have three older sisters and so I'm the youngest sister and like While I do Alice's dilemma in sort of being I'm Mayura's younger sister, that resonated Mm. with me because prior to our family moving to a different city, I very much so was I'm X, Y, and Z's youngest sister and stuff. And so it's like I'm trying to navigate what life is and I don't know if I'm as excellent I guess I am now, but I, at the time I was, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm as excellent or as academic as my older sisters and stuff, but I wasn't in their shadow to the extent that, you know, that became my personality. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like, I got it to a point, but it's like, okay, well, even if I'm this person's youngest sister, Like I said, I wouldn't let anybody talk to me any kind of way or throw things at me and stuff. At the same time, it's just like if you're in school and I mean, I guess it's just because of it's the story. But it's like if you're in school and this sort of things are happening, like somebody's going to tell. So like y'all picking on somebody like that, like openly, like you're going to get in trouble. And so (laughs) you're like, there are teachers somewhere in this school, presumably. (laughs) Right. So just bringing that over from Shoujo Sunday, we always have grief, like, with the faculty. (laughs) Yeah, like, the case of the missing faculty in every anime school. (laughs) It's very egregious in this. I don't think we see a single teacher ever at all. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so it's like this girl is having stuff getting thrown at her. They're spreading rumors, like borderline assault happens like, like yeah where, borderline assault like basically all almost all the way like it's it's a lot a lot of things happen and it's where is the faculty there, there is none like the most we get is parents and a lot of them are dead like i don't know like, right. like or they disappear so it's like okay and then keo and alice eventually are just they're like we're gonna go live somewhere else bye and the parents are like Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we don't, we don't, we don't get, get it. it but but just just yeah, we don't understand, but like, go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You brought back my era, so peace. We believe you. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> my goodness. My goodness. So, yeah, the absenteeism is, uh, is strong with this one. Um, well, so that brings us to the center of everybody's attention. Or we could do my era first. No, it's better if we do Kyo. <laughs> yeah. Um, the center of everybody's attention is good boy Kyo, but he has a dark past. Oh my gosh, the romance tropes, they're here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in full swing. In full swing. So they're so here. So Kyo is like, hi, I'm a hot archer man. 
and both the Seno sisters love me, and I love them both. Yay! That's great. All of that is cool. He's a very nice, like, upstanding gentleman, always trying to protect people. And then you find out that I feel like he has multiple darknesses, (laughs) one of which is that he's like, "Uh uh-oh, I killed my dad, my abusive dad, uh, because I wished that he would die. I literally just wished that he would die, and I told him that. And the other one is that he had started to date Myra, then was like, just kidding, I love Alice. And I know how that looks, but I gotta be honest with myself and break up with Myra, but she won't let me, and oh boy. (laughs) Yeah. My thing is, I I don't know that he ever actually had romantic feelings for Myra. I don't think he did. Right. I think it was one of those situations where he was like, I get along really well with this person, and this person's like clearly really interested in me, so maybe I could just like give it a shot, which (laughs) never ends well. Yeah, yes. I think Kiel reminds me of this, like, it's this, I don't know, if, there probably is a specific archetype or name to it, but it's the person that's so nice to everybody that you can't really tell whether they care about somebody in a different way because they treat mm-hmm. everyone the same. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I feel like that fits Kyo to a T and... If I was Mayura, like, the fact that he had to be convinced to go out with her. <laughs> yeah. Um, that <laughs> oh, would have yeah. set off alarm bells because it's just like, okay, so my sister had to tell you to go. It's not because, like, oh, I'm fabulous. We do archery together. I've been talking to you for all these months. It's just because my sister told you to, like, grow a pair. And now we're dating but you keep talking to me about my sister like yeah no thanks (laughs) yeah I mean the way my era frames it is that she's like I put in so much effort to get him to notice me and then you just like swooped in and it's like yeah that's how feelings work you know like yeah yeah uh, I get how certainly uh there there is something to getting people to notice you and slowly you know if if you're like in an arranged marriage you kind of learn to if you if you want to be happy at all you learn to like have affection for that person right like uh so there's some validness to that but it's just like well you guys aren't in an arranged marriage situation you know or like that's not the conditions that are happening here uh so Mayura is definitely unreasonable so I guess that can take us so I feel like Keo doesn't like he's fine and I like him he's pretty to look at but I don't feel like he has a lot outside of the like romance archetype of like good guy with a dark secret past <laughs> you can't yeah. know or whatever like, like for me personally like I eat that up like I'm the demographic like, like you're like I love it, yes, <laughs> you eat, it. eat it to me <laughs> <laughs> all right I mean fair enough again I'm like no shade on him yeah I just oh don't... yeah so <laughs> that there's a lot to, to like dive into at this point. Yeah. So Myra, did you ever like Myra? Is my question. <laughs> like at any point in the story where you like Myra is good though. The one time I liked her was when Alice brought Neo Zeka home. Or Neo is it Zika or Zeka? I don't know. I I, I was know. saying Neo Zika, but I don't know Zika. Yeah. Okay. I would assume it's Zika. Okay, Zika. Yeah, so when Alice brought Neo Zika home and then Mayura was sick with her allergies and in bed and she, Alice was talking about, oh, like, you know, I have to figure out what to do with her. And Mayura was just like, oh, well, I know you've always wanted a pet and everything and you haven't been able to have it because of me. Like, I feel like if we just, I don't know, in a sense, like, if we figure this out, like, you could still have it, you know, because she didn't want her sister to lose that experience. So that was the one time that I genuinely was like, oh, yeah, you know, that is that is the sisterly bond that I expected to see versus what we saw for the rest of the volume. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm 100% right there with you. That was the moment for me, too. yeah. I'm just like, okay, so then we, like, that's the explanation for, like, why Myra 
succumb to the d- darkness so easily, right? Because she was always kind of semi mean to Alice. But I was like, I feel like we weren't supposed to technically feel that way. I don't know. <laughs> like, I feel like Watase wanted us to be like, yeah, my era is actually nice. And I'm like, no. Right. It's always manipulative. <laughs> because Alice is literally going to like the depths of trouble to to bring her back but like her sister didn't really show her much affection to begin with like i kind of right. didn't even feel like there was a sisterly bond at stake right yeah i think we saw like one flashback in like volume 6 or maybe volume 7 of like alice crying about being bullied and wanting to disappear and then Mayura being very upset by it. And it's like, no, you can't disappear or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other, aside from that flashback and then her saying that Alice can keep the rabbit, like, there's no bond there. And I feel even when it comes to the family dynamic, the Seno family dynamic, it's very unrealistic in the sense that, to be honest, the youngest child, and I'm I'm saying this as a youngest child, gets the most attention versus the mm-hmm. oldest. Yes, so that was- I'm also a youngest. <laughs> I can concur. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was just like, I don't know. It's a little unreal because at, at a certain point, I was just like, okay, if the parents are so focused on Mayura, like, why did you have a second child? Um, right. I didn't want her to be lonely. Yeah, I'm an only child, so I've only, like, I just have to interpret sibling dynamics from any of my friends. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you guys do the other, you know, 20 hours of a day. I never see you, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, my era was a really difficult one for me to, like, like in any way mm, okay but now the whole plot is about saving her yeah and i don't know I'd, so the scenes that i distinctly remember from like volume four were when i guess they saved my era from the first disappearance and she's come back and she was initially pretending that she didn't remember anything but then you know as she sees alice and kyo interact with each other and be in love with each other. And Kyo keeps trying to be like, my arrow, we need to break up. And she's just like, refuse. <laughs> um, no. Oh, yikes. No to that. Yeah. And then puts a curse on Kyo so that like, if Alice tells her him that sh- she loves him, he'll like die automatically and all these, all these things. So in volume four, then it's clear that she does remember everything. So she's confronting Alice in like the shower and she like, sprays the shower head in her face and I was like this has been lodged in my mind as like evil peak evil sister <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh wait for me wait peak evil sister was um <laughs> the Kazuki plot <gasps> oh my god oh, yeah. I mean yeah yeah that was, that was rough <laughs> I there's there's no way see like I feel sister well, for sisterly dynamics, I just, even if you like the same boy, I just don't think you would ever in a million years put your sibling in a situation where they could possibly be ass- uh, assaulted. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think, and it's like, and it happens earlier as well with Tatsuya, which I mean, to Mayura's credit, Right. The small the smallest inkling of credit I could give her was that <laughs> once she noticed <laughs> that Alice liked Kyo, rather than trying to really confront Alice about it, because she also understood that Alice helped get Kyo to date Mayura, she was just like, oh, well, you know, if you start dating somebody else, like maybe you won't like him anymore and you won't feel as conflicted. So... I'm just giving her that like benefit of the doubt of, of that's why she started that. But even with that relationship, she victim blamed her when he tried to force a kiss on on Alice when Tatsuya tried to do that. But the Kazuki one, I was just like, OK, this is this is beyond like I, I don't know how you could ever really come back from that. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess that so you were saying earlier that you were like the the dynamics are really unrealistic and I guess my thing the one thing that I give 
I won't say I give Mayura credit for, but Watase's like story writing of Mayura is that uh, at least with her, I was like, okay, there are we are presented multiple grievances of like why she has fallen into the darkness. And like, of course she keeps blaming Alice, but it's not really Alice's fault. Right. And Mm -hmm. I, the thing that I struggled with in the story overall was like, okay, we keep going to these, these darkness points and it's always, you know, a very formative negative experience that people have had. And I'm like, that's great. That's fair. Definitely. We all have negative experiences that shape us in some way, but they're always like, a distinct breaking point in that person. I'm like, I don't feel like that's how humans generally work. Like, it's kind of like you need multiple instances that slowly wear you down, which is where I did like the sibling dynamics. I was like, that makes sense to me. That's definitely what happens. Yeah, but overall, I was like, everybody else, you know, we're just going to get those flashpoints of like, here is their really bad thing that happened to them that shapes their entire personality and how they react to any given situation I'm like all right I don't know (laughs) like fine yeah that does seem kind of a lot to just hinge somebody's entire way of thinking based on one event that happened in their life even I mean like no I mean trauma is real and it can like rewire the nervous system and it takes time to heal but it's usually I don't know I, I I just I do feel like it was kind of extreme for for some of it if that makes sense. Yes. I don't know how to word it in a way that's delicate enough right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's fine. Yeah, I'm just like, I get traumatic experiences and like you relive them and they definitely do inform your your outlook. But like, I don't know, not not to this <laughs> degree. So I like appreciate that Mayura came come like kept coming back to the same pain points. But like, it was definitely like, well, but Alice also did this to me and this to me and this other thing to me. And it's like, okay, we get it, you know? <laughs> right, because it's like, like on the subject of trauma, not to, not to make it dark, it's some of these characters have like truly been through some concerning stuff. And Mayura yeah. is just like, she yeah. liked my boyfriend and she's the one destroying the world. So it's a little imbalance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, well, Keo kind of, magically killed his dad but okay yeah yeah uh, i mean he bakes like but what else <laughs> okay <laughs> um I, I mean he looks good but he bakes he does archery uh <laughs> i have yet to see what about him is like so great or amazing that the whole world needs to go down in flames or not in flames in darkness <laughs> for him you can't be with him right if i cannot taste kyo's creme brulee every night like <laughs> this world's gotta go <laughs> it's gotta go i mean you could just go buy his creme brulee right know, right, right. <laughs> that's probably right. A, you're probably more likely to get the creme brulee if you have to pay for it like that's how artists yeah. people like contractors they don't work on their own house they pay, they get paid to work on other people's houses it's the same thing <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh my gosh well let's uh round out this main uh cast i guess so a fourth man a fourth person appears a second man to throw a twist in some more love triangles let's form them um and his name is frey and he's from norway and he's a he's a weirdo he's a lotus he's so there are all these lotus words that they're supposed to be learning that give power and let's be real the powers in this are like loosey-goosey like yeah (laughs) Watase was like I don't know I made up some words but the words can mean multiple things and it's like okay (laughs) yeah (laughs) whatever is plot convenient let's go with that sure why not but Frey has like mastered all of the words and so he has come to protect Kyo and Alice, who are the like specials, you know, the the chosen ones <laughs> for whatever reason, because Mayura is going to destroy the world. So they're like, you're the closest uh, connected to them, and uh, you got to go defeat the ultimate evil. Uh, so Frey's dark past, though, is that this mm-hmm. is <laughs> pretty wild. So his parents again are dead because they're either dead or missing for some other reason so his, both of his parents died and he was passed around to different relatives 
And then he gets to one of his relatives and his older cousin, she's like four years older, is there and they they fall in love. Uh, but she's already engaged. Uh, but she comes back to him when he's only 15 and is like, no, I I love you. We should run away together and get married. And he's like, what? No, <laughs> I'm 15 and you're my cousin, basically. Um, so from that, she goes and like drowns herself. And whoa. Yeah. Simmer down, Watase. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, also, first of all, I was, you know, reading this and I'm vibing or whatever. And then I get to this point. And I'm like, incest, no. Thank you you. had to say why it was going so well. <laughs> we were right, doing so me, well. I mean, not even just the incest. I was like, statutory? Oh, Damn. I know. That That's it. Yeah. It's like layers. <laughs> I was like, he's 15. That's, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, it's real bad. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, when you think about it at first, because, like, when you're first introduced to Frey, he's just, like, kissing Alice. He's, like, mail order bride. I'm finna take you back to Scandinavia right now. (laughs) (laughs) Make you my bride. Let's go have babies. Yeah. Yeah. Until he realizes she doesn't have her passport, because who walks around with their passport and stuff? And so, like, when you see his physical interactions with Alice and then you remember like his trauma and the statutory in the past that's actually a symptom of that like I'm mean, to be to be realistic like if you are in a situation when you're way too young but then you're engaging in like sexual type th- behavior Um, I guess with somebody that's manipulating you or a predator or whatever, like there's, I think it's called hypersexuality. Mm -hmm. Like when it's like that happens to you. And then as a result, then you're super sexual. And I don't know. And I mean, aside from like kissing her, it's not like he goes farther than that. But I thought about that once I was, when I was rereading and like, got to his part of the like his backstory. I was like, oh, oh, which I don't know if Watase meant to do that. But I I thought about I thought about that when we got to Frey. Yeah. I just assumed Watase was like, how much dissonance can I make between his like silly behavior and the supreme like messed upness of his, his past, you know? Right. Yeah. Like at first I was thinking, you know, like Frey reminded me a bit of like Atomaki Suo or Aya Soma, just like with the flamboyant, like overtly like in your face romantic or like kind of sexual in nature. Um yeah. but man, that backstory really kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I get what you're saying, because we get that kind of not in the sexual way so much with right, Kyo, right. but like yeah. with, with Kyo, his his fear is always that he's like, I don't want to be like my dad who is abusive and like hits my mom and is a drunk. And so he tries so consciously to like go in the opposite direction, but then feels like he falls into the pit of darkness, right? So it's like, how far from the tree can you fall? Like if you've only known trauma how could you ever get out of the the circle of trauma right like it's 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 just like that's all you know yeah so of course it doesn't like I I feel like when we think about it in the abstract we're always like well if you know the pain of of being abused then sure why would you continue that but it's like if you don't know anything else you're just like that's how things are right like Like that's your normal yeah so yeah so Frey is a he sure is a character (laughs) yeah yeah so then of the main like Lotus Masters that we get, well, well, I forgot about Christopher. Christopher exists too. Christopher <laughs> is a little boy. Oh gosh, what's his full name? I gotta read it. I gotta click this link and remember his full ridiculous name. So Christopher William Orson Andrew Roland the 13th. <laughs> Amazing. Watase had a lot of fun with that. I'm sure. Yeah. So he's kind of he's like english i think and Mm -hmm. he's maybe 12 or 13 and his darkness is that his dad kind of ignored him when he was a younger child 
and was seeing other women after his mom had died. And so he was very upset at his dad and like kind of hated him. Uh, but then he got into a horrific car accident. Like Christopher was involved as a pedestrian in a car accident that mangled his leg. And then his dad came to the hospital and was like, oh, no, Christopher, I love you. I'm going to help you get better. And Christopher was like, so then we were cool. And I was like, no, not <laughs> no. at all. It, it is not that easy. It's a start, but it's not that easy. Yeah. Because, like, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, does does Britain have CPS, the oh. Child Protective <laughs> Services? <Do they> <laughs> like, can we call them? <laughs> because it's like, you were, you he got it so upset with Christopher that he hit him at one point within that flashback. And then if you had been with this child, maybe his leg wouldn't have gotten screwed up like that. And so it's just like, you saying you're going to be for your child be there for your child like that's what you're supposed to do like why haven't you been doing that you know like your wife yeah, isn't even fresh in the grave yet and like you're chasing after like different blouses and stuff like no that's not how this yeah. works <laughs> so. yeah I think there's so a lot of the series emphasizes you know forgiveness as the main theme and like compassion for people's circumstances that that like ostensibly make them behave one way or another like they they are trapped in a certain set of circumstances and given those inputs they have presumably done the best even if they fell into darkness like it takes a real strength of will uh to resist just doing the the harmful e easy road thing there you know but i'm definitely like the series does not explore how yeah like maybe things could be simpler if we <laughs> didn't have to forgive people for so many things, like these extreme things. Or I waffled back and forth about this while reading where I was like, I felt like we didn't go into anybody's mind who was truly in the end reprehensible. But I feel like there were characters who just were like, one of the evil dark word masters of the Marum word masters uh, what was his name? Samuel. Samuel, very religious. Um, so was it Samuel or Eric? No, I, I'm talking about Samuel, the young oh. choir boy. Uh, so, oh, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, Attack yeah. on Titan before Attack on Titan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Samuel, like you know, his darkness incident was that he was really great at singing, and so all the other choir boys got jealous of how much the adults like praised him and everything. So they put glass in his sandwich <laughs> so that it cut up all of his mouth and his throat. And then he couldn't sing as well anymore. And I'm like, first of all, Watase, very dark. Where did you get oh this from? Oh my gosh. Stop. You should have seen my face <laughs> yeah. when I was reading that. I, I just could not <laughs> believe what I was reading. Like yeah. you would go to jail. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, what is the inner heart of the kids who did that like? Like, is there a reason that I should feel sympathy for them, actually? Like, I think that would be really hard to gain <laughs> it yeah. for, you know? Yeah. And it's also, like, what what is the line between, like, excuses and just, like, not taking personal responsibility at some point? I don't know. That th These are the lines where I was like, I don't think it went quite hard enough, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Definitely. His His sad story that was very depressing i i could not imagine just the feeling of having that happen and it's just because they're jealous of his voice yeah but, it's like your voices are going to change you know you're like real right. boys that's how this works <laughs> yes it is physically how this works <laughs> yes i definitely thought that that was like the darkest thing in this manga i don't know if you Y'all have other moments where you're like, that was the darkest thing in this moment. No, yeah. no, I agree. I feel like that was the darkest. And then, like, when we're learning his backstory, well, even before that, and they're fighting, that's why I said he was Attack on Titan before there was Attack on Titan, because the body horror that yes. oh, yeah. went into, <laughs> into that chapter with all of the, his heads, like, yeah. like, in the teeth, I was just like, oh, this is a lot. Like, wow. Okay. Yeah, Watase was having a lot of fun being like, you all think I'm fun and pretty fantasy or like silly 
kind of slice of life, more, more realistic romance, but I want to do horror. And I was like, all right, go for it. <laughs> You're doing right. a great job. Do that thing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know why the ultimate darkness master who overtook my era is some sort of weird sea urchin creature, but that's okay. Like, go, f- go for it. Do what you want. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like, love this for you. <laughs> I mean, honestly speaking, I'm surprised, like, now that we know the backstories, I don't know why they chose Mayura and not Samuel to be the one at that, like... Right, yeah. Like, because that is dark, like, you can't, who can save him from that? Like, his backstory is so bad. Yeah, like, he's justified in just being very angry. I'd also be like humans are stupid and I hate them forever (laughs) yeah right because even like that probably left a physical issue for the rest of his life like he's reminded every day that people hated him enough to do that like that's really dark and I guess in the same way that y'all are like there's never any teachers to yell at these students (laughs) who are being mean like Nobody ever seems to get in legal trouble either. Like, yeah, no, no Where police are the lawyers? exists. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, none though. Like, I, I understand bad things happen. See, I got into a car accident this on Christmas where a man ran away from the scene and is not going to be prosecuted in any way. I get it. <laughs> like, but uh-huh. you know, I don't know. This seems a bit extreme. Most definitely. Even that house. Remember when um Mayor. Not mayor, it was Samuel acting as mayor, right? Who, like, put that big hole or whatever crater-looking thing in the Sino house. I'm like, how are you going to fix that, let alone explain it? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. A lot of it was just like, well, we could never explain this to police anyway, so we just we just won't involve them. And I'm like, okay, I mean, fair, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So the last two characters I wanted to talk about round out kind of the Lotus Master people, but they don't have their dark backstories right. on purpose, according to Watase. And she was like, you know, kind of just ran out of space here. And also I wanted to leave some things up to your imagination. So the first one is Pai Meilin, who I swear I am so silly. When I wrote my notes down, I was like, she reminds me of Maylin from Card Captor so- Soccer anime. I'm like, they literally have the same name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <duh>. <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> like, Watase is full of the clamp influences. That sword that Alice has at one point, I'm like, that is the sword that Sakura would have if she had a sword. <laughs> mm mm-hmm. But this character doesn't really do anything. My favorite character is definitely Billy McDowell. What a lovely man. Yeah, an, an interesting hairline. But yes, that's I don't mean. know what he's doing, <laughs> why he's like that. But he is from the U.S. In his profile, it said he was from the project. So we're like, all right, let's just guess New York. Like, <laughs> why not? Yeah. Right. Um, and then at one point, there is a silly thing where they're like, talking about what they do as an occupation. He's like, well, guess what I do? And so the other point in part is that Billy is a black man, which comes up later as in a Watase note, which we will get there. So Keo, yeah. guess basketball player because he's a stereotype man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Frey says DJ, Maylin says bartender, Chris says boxer, Alice says lawyer because she's a sweet girl who doesn't give in to those stereotypes. <laughs> Neo yeah. Zeka says bodyguard, but he is in fact a USPS employee. And I'm like, yes, thank you. I love it. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, fantastic. 10 out of 10. <laughs> um, yeah, so Watase actually wrote in a note, in an author's note, that she was like, so yeah. So Billy is black, and I knew that if I wrote a darkness past story for him, no matter what I did, basically, somebody would be mad about it. Like, I would, they would accuse me of messing it up, and I didn't want to mess it up, so I'm just going to leave it to your imagination. It's like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel, I guess it just, it depends on just people's, like, comfortability level. Right? Because there are plenty of authors that aren't Black that have Black characters, whether they're main characters or side characters. 
So, like, I understand her wanting to include diversity in the story, but then also not wanting to offend anyone in the process of, like, making it. But at the same time, well, I guess one one thing I could say is that given how short the story is or just how many volumes it, there is, I didn't know if this many Lotus Masters were necessary. It was not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these extra lotus. I don't know if that was really necessary, but since we're here, I just feel that it would have been nice to just like see what Billy's story would have been. Now, I mean, because of the fact that she said that he's from the projects, I feel like that in and of itself could have lent to more stereotypes. So it's like, okay, well, I'm glad that. I don't personally have to encounter that, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't know, like maybe if he wasn't from there, let's just say he's just randomly from New Jersey and like, he's a (laughs) postal guy and he likes to do that. And he, on the weekends, like plays the saxophone because I think that was also in his character. Yeah, it was in his character thing. Um, So it's like, he plays the saxophone with his friends on the weekends or something like, I think that it could have been interesting or if she could have, I mean, it's there. She could have just said that one of his traumas had to deal with racism and everything. But like I said, it's just, I think it's all about like the comfortability level. So it's like, I still respect her not wanting to offend anyone. Yeah. There's a, I'm like of two minds about it too. Cause I feel like not just with Billy, but you know, like Chris and Frey are white and Keo yeah. and Alice are Japanese and <laughs> Maylin is is from Shanghai. So Watase is definitely doing a overall like globalization writing multiple different races that are not her own. Yeah. Or characters from different countries that are not her own. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like and I like that actually a lot of them don't give in to the visual stereotypes normally of the way those types yeah. of characters are drawn in manga where it's like white people have really big noses and like weird eyes and black people have really big lips and, and, and everything. So I was like, she doesn't do those visual stereotypes, but I feel like then she's like, ah, can't fully commit to like making a respectful like story about yeah. like, I'm still afraid of, of the backlash. Right. So she's just like, oh, I'm just going to, leave that over here <laughs> yeah. for, for you so so I'm of two minds like on one level I appreciate and on the other I'm like you ran out of time and we're just like I want to move on to absolute boyfriend and right get guided at this point <laughs> yeah so that's like all the characters so we did get one listener question and I will say that we generally got a lot of comments that were along the lines of, I love this series. And the only thing I have to say to that is that I feel that I greatly underestimated people's esteem of this series. <laughs> like, I was just like, oh, yeah, Alice 19th, uh, what, what, you know, the the big three Watase series are, or even the big two Watase series are Shugi Yugi and Serez. I was like, well, so it's not yeah. that. But everybody came out and was like, oh, I love Alice 19th. And I was like, okay, I see you. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's just like the nostalgia, right? Like, Oh, I definitely think it's the nostalgia. A lot of them seem to be like, well, I haven't read it in, again, 15 years. But I remember really loving it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, cool. Good enough for me. That's 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 great. I love it. Um, so the one question we got was from at Crystal, the Scout, Sailor Scout on Instagram. Um, so in the manga, there are 25, I think it's actually 24, 20, well, no, there are 25 Lotus words, including the hidden one. See, I already, I already messed it up. You're right. <laughs> um, and 24 Marum words, but not all the words are used in the story. Super frustrating for fans who wanted to know them all. Do you think the number of words was more of an oversight by Watase and thinking that there was a longer story planned out or was the quantity of the words never meant to be the focus of a Lotus Master rather than truly understanding how to utilize them? So first, I actually want to say that you do learn all of the words because they're in the back of Volume 7. Yeah. We're going through them in the order that they were shown in the series, which is very confusing because that's not the number order 
they are given in the scheme of the like the Lotus Masters have their own ordering. And so those do not align. And it's very confusing to be like, number three, the 24th word in the <laughs> Lotus. And it's like, ah, no, that's too many numbers to keep track of. Um, but they are all technically laid out in the back of, I think actually not all of them are in volume seven. It starts in like volume six or five uh, that going through it. But you do get through all of them by the end of volume seven. And so I definitely think there was a longer story planned out. Just the ending feels really rushed to me. I don't know if, if you two agree with that. It did yeah. feel, being me, I guess, um, the first thing that I noticed felt rushed was like the confession at the end. It, oh, kinda, yeah. it felt like an afterthought. Like after the entire story hinged on the love triangle, it was just like, oh, I'll just throw them together at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do feel that there was a longer story planned and I think I don't I wonder which volume we could even pick out where it's like oh Watase found out that they were only gonna have like seven volumes and so it was like time to cram but yeah I think that there was supposed to be a longer story and I think even hearing the backstory of certain characters it's like oh this would have been fleshed out like more because the way that we see it is like as if it's shock value so hearing about Frey it's like what Frey and I what okay it's shock yeah. value yeah, um, yeah. and Eric like, and right Eric. and er hearing uh, the way that Eric that was handled shock value Kazuki passing away what oh like, my goodness yeah Kazuki passing away from like the bluntest arrow I've ever seen in my <laughs> yeah. oh no actually it was uh it was uh Samuel shot him so he he probably made that arrow super sharp but otherwise my euro was definitely trying to shoot people with like the bluntest arrows I've ever seen right <laughs> right. right and it's like this super like Darva mass that was eating the metropolis. Like, I just feel like I think Watase wanted to actually flesh out this story more. And when she got heard word that it wasn't going to happen, I was like, okay, well, here are all the story elements, and I'm just going to put all of them <laughs> into this, and we're just going to fast forward, and that's the that's the manga. Right. It's like um, a, it's like a cheese board of traumatic backstories. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Eric one is just like, did we need this extra twist with Bray? Because we had just gotten the thing about him loving his cousin, which was again told in the most melodramatic way. It was like, yeah. I went to live with my uncle and there lived my older cousin. And we instantly fell in love. Like every sentence is only like five to 10 words and they're all just like super dramatic. Like hard hitting sentences. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like the next arc is like, and now we're in Frey's uh, home chapel place, sanctuary. And we learned that Eric has betrayed them all and Eric was his mentor and he was just like, yes, I was I was jealous of you being better as a Lotus Master than me. And it's like, haven't we played up this like jealousy thing enough? Do we need this extra twist with Frey? He didn't need this. We didn't need this here. It just wasn't necessary. We could have given us Billy's backstory and said that would have been more fun. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. We could have absolutely used that that space for somebody else's backstory. Right, because yeah. it's just like, I mean, it's kind of enough. We already have the 9-11 references, but now we're going to have a serial killer? Okay. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then the 13th bell goes off, and it's just like, wow. Okay. Bye, Eric. Yeah. I was just like, this Eric thing. No, I didn't need this, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But the end of the question about, like, the quantity of words never meant to be the focus of a Lotus Master rather than truly understanding how to utilize them. Like, I think Watase did a good job of, to me, I read it more as, like, what mattered in the end was that all of them worked together well. Like, Keo yeah. and Alice learned different words but learned how to use them really well together. And I find that a more aspiration. Like, that, that's a more heartwarming story to me than both of them learning all 24 words and they don't learn it at the same rate and then they just that's what makes Eric jealous you know like it was more right. heartwarming to me to be like we're a team 
yay yeah and I think Frey I think it was Frey who said something like this like pretty early in the series when they're first kind of learning about the inner heart and the lotus words he says something like when you're sad whose words are more effective the words of a total stranger or someone close to you and I thought that that was really really interesting just as an aspect of how the words work and just like the universe just it really does matter who's saying anything to you because depending on who they are in your life it holds more weight yeah for sure yeah so I I I mean we can get into like segues nicely into the the power of words and words as literal violence in this (laughs) in this story um or words as something that can prevent violence because I think this this goes into the 9-11 thing where a lot of Watase's notes about 9-11 just keep being like, if we all just talk to each other, <laughs> we, we would be able to solve the world's problems. Like, war is, literal violence is wrong. But I feel like I'm like, but you, you've written a story about how words are violence. And mm-hmm. I guess I thought more about how, like, Israel Palestine kind of conflict where I was like, you know, I've been talking about that for decades. It doesn't do any. Like there's such deep seated hatred, you know, like the words the words are violence and that begets like real violence. I don't know. Yeah. Like I went to which I mean I guess random is it I don't know if it would be necessarily be fun, but I like went to Israel like to do field work. Um, and while I was there, it, it's really tense and it's just like, it's supposed to be a very holy place, but you see people walking around with like AK-47s. Um, so at times it can just be like a lot. And so the issue, at least with Israel and Palestine, it's an intractable conflict. Like that's the terminology for it I can only say this just because of my degree but I I have a degree in all of this like before I was doing before I was a social media manager like I was all into like oh learning about conflict and genocide and all this stuff but sometimes communication just it's people are just not gonna see eye to eye it's just not gonna work out like you can have shared experiences lived experiences like it's not if I had to pull from a different franchise that's not anime it's not like Batman versus Superman where like both of their mother's names are Martha like it's not (laughs) gonna (laughs) pan out like that so I just feel you know it was interesting seeing her reference 9-11 a lot but at the same time I just I think with certain situations or certain issues, sometimes words aren't enough. But then I don't really know past that point, like, how is it possible to mediate certain conflicts? But I think within this story, it's like, okay, well, we're learning that words in and of itself, like, you don't have to physically maim anyone. Words in and of themselves can be violent. Um, Mm -hmm. They can also be healing as well. So... Yeah, it's all it's all in how you wield it, right? And then Yeah. I also went to Israel for like only a hot week and I was like, hmm, I have brushed up against an AK forty seven and I don't like this. Right. <laughs> you know? like, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> this is very uncomfortable, yeah, for sure. And I just think that so I like this power of words and words are violence. Like that's, that's a perfectly fine message. And I I actually like it most from looking at it at at the angle of like, are the things that you say when you're at your worst, is that like your true self? Cause that's how negativity festers. Like if you just focus on the negativity, you just keep digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And so I used to be the type of person who was like, yes, if you say the negative thing, that's like the real thing that you meant. All the positive things that you said before that, when you're not feeling, you know, when you're when you're in your normal self, that's not your real feelings. Your feeling, your real feelings are your darkest, darkest thoughts. <laughs> uh, and I have tried to uh, get get out of that, but I, I think this manga does a good job of having that like teenage feel about it, of like embracing that that mentality. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think we can just be both. I think, you know, like what you say when you're in that darkness is true, just as like what you say when you're happy can also be true. It's just more about how you let those words impact your life in like your overall trajectory. Yeah, I think Alice says something like there's light and dark in both of us. We just have the power to choose. Uh, I love that. I know it's like so cliche, but I I love cheesy <laughs> stuff, guys. Um, <laughs> Yay, cheesy stuff. <laughs> yeah. So like I wouldn't say that like the negativity, like the darkness, the innate darkness is like what you really think. I think it's just an aspect. Like I, I don't think our thoughts are really black and white. They're really more shades of gray. And it's just kind of after some thought, what conclusion you come to. It doesn't have to be like your initial reaction is like the true thing. Because there's even also like not to go on a tangent. I mean, I also think I saw this on Tumblr. So like, it probably it could be true. It could not be true. Um, but there's also that saying that your initial thought was what you were like raised to think. But the second thought you have after your reaction right. is what you've grown to, into being. And I love that actually. Yeah, that's what I think about a lot when, I guess in college, I was I got was in a class where my teacher was like, so we all react on stereotypes. And I was like, no, I can't, no, like, that's <laughs> not true. Like, every situation is not us reacting on stereotypes. And she was like, yes, it is. How else would you interact with the world? And so, like, I quickly came to see that that, that is true. And then it's like, you know, like, you're always going to have, you approach a person, you're go- always going to have those ideas of what you think they are based on how they look, but then it's totally how you just act. Like, do you act on those thoughts? Like you don't have to, you know? So definitely Mm -hmm. like, okay, that that's who you really are is if you just like stop, take a second and are like, Hmm, let me reassess the situation and then go from there. Yeah. I also the only other thing that I was thinking about with this, like words or violence thing is I think a big issue that is not addressed by it being, you know, like some tied to something as serious and dark as 9-11. Like I think, you know, the Metropolitan Building being taken over and, and some of the things that happened, I'm like, that's just, you know, they talk about it being terrorism and everything. And I was like, okay, we're going like, we're like really leaning into it at this point. Yeah. It's just that in a lot of situations, people talk past each other, actually. Mm-hmm. And I think we get that a bit with Myra and Alice but it didn't, it didn't really feel like they were talking past each other. They're talking about the same thing. They just don't agree. Like, Mayura just refuses to agree to the thing that Keo and Alice are saying, right? But I think, especially in social media times, you see people having a conversation. And it's like, are you having a conversation? Or are you just saying disconnected things to each other? Because that's usually how I interpret most con- conversations, quote unquote, on the internet these days. So I think that's a, that's a missed opportunity. But yeah, I guess... Aside from 9-11 <laughs> influences, we do get some, you know, it's it's named after Alice in Wonderland. There's a rabbit and she's named Alice. So it's after Alice in Wonderland and all these other influences. What did you guys think about its various influences? Did it come together well in any way? I feel like the, <laughs> the like, this. The way that the story started, because I feel like in Alice in Wonderland, it's also very abrupt and like, oh, she's just following this rabbit. We're in a dream. She's drowning. Like stuff is happening. And so like the way that the first two volumes are and it's like, uh, OK, she's a Lotus master. She has this bracelet. She's adding on like words like it's like Pandora, like, you know, those Pandora bla- bracelets. <laughs> Uh it's like that like oh oh, like oh okay like (laughs) courage i'm like oh so that's why it's alice 19th because it's alice courage okay i'm getting it i would say to that one point the listener that sent him that question uh if it was me i would have made the final the final number right the final lotus word i would have had it be, be the 19th one but that's me uh, <laughs> but it was right. the first one instead. <laughs> uh, but the other influences just, I don't know. There's just that there's so much going on in Alice 19th. It's like now that we're revisiting it, it's hard to wrap my mind around it fully. Like, oh, yeah, she transforms and 
you know, they have this special, like, necklace. You know, I guess, I mean, if Alice is a magical girl, at least, like, Kyo does a little bit more than Tuxedo Mask. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. What do you think, Tiana? As far as the specific Alice in Wonderland references go, it kind of, I-, I was failing to find Alice in Wonderland in it, apart from the very beginning where there's a girl named Alice and she chases a bunny and all of a sudden her world changes. I don't know if that was supposed to be where it ended, but I- or if I missed something going forward, but. No, I think what Tase in one of the notes was like, don't read too much into it, kids. Okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense then. It's cute that she had inspiration there, though, because it's such a, like, a staple childhood story. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, yeah, again, disparate influences. So, like, is Alice a magical girl? Every, but every review I read of this was like, it's a magical girl story. And I was like, I don't know that I would you know, recommend if you like card capture Sakura or <laughs> Sailor Moon, like go read Alice 19. Like, I don't know that I would exactly say that, but yeah. I get, I get why that's being said. Yeah. It kind of like toes the line between magical girl, at least for me, from someone who hasn't watched Sailor Moon or card capture Sakura since I was a kid. So it's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. yeah. That's true. It's like when you dip your toe into the bath to see if it's hot enough. <laughs> so it's like the process of dipping the toe. That is Alice nineteenth, and then the water is magical girl. <laughs> okay. okay. So it's okay. like a little, like a hint. It's there. It's, it's like Lacroix. Lacroix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alice nineteenth is Lacroix. We've we've solved it, y'all. We've yeah. solved it. <laughs> okay. Well, I think. We have mostly said a lot of the things that we wanted to say about the notes throughout this episode, but the one thing I have to bring up for sure is when I was thrown such into my my glorious past when Watase was ranting about loving Escaflone and the music and Escaflone is like peak influential anime for me. That, that side note was also kind of normal for a manga artist it was just like i like to play video games and listen to music i'm like yeah that's what they usually talk about in there <laughs> um and when they had wings for that first time in this manga i was like you just ripped that out of escaflone she though. did like, that's, the, that's the most bon finale thing i've ever seen <laughs> aside from bon finale <laughs> and I don't, the other one is just that Watase was literally like, Japan today is poisoned. And it was in a larger note about how sickly Watase is known to be, both, you know, in Japan itself and overseas. We all just know this at this point. It's basically just like, Japan is making me sick. I need, I need to blow this joint. And I'm like, okay. Like, somebody compile all of Watase's notes into a book and analyze them. That is still what I want. <laughs> Someday I will I will do this when I'm like 50 years old. <laughs> you know? Yes, because I, I would read it because I just, at, at, after a certain point, it's just like, I just want to hear about you, Watase, because like <laughs> you're talking about, like she talked about how she was a tomboy and how she knows that girls are like girly girls and stuff and that she sort of grew into that by wearing long skirts. And I was just like, oh, okay, like, I didn't expect to see her talking about, like, her gender identity, but here we are, and it's cool. So it's like, okay, I want to hear more about you, but also this page, it's like, at least when we first started off the series, it's like, oh, okay, we're meeting Alice, and it's so cute, and 9-11, it's like, what? 9-11 <laughs> happened, and we should just talk about it more, and I was like, okay, that's oh, not... Man what I expected to be right here, but for sure. No, I think it would be fascinating, yeah, to put Watase's author's notes in order and give them some context and then just see the evolution of, like, her thought process and, like, all the wacky things she said about, or, you know, like, scathing things about editors and everything that she said, especially in Arata, like, whew. I would love to see it. Just all easily findable for me. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to start scanning them all and like putting it in a book. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Almost final segment is Shipping Corner. 
because there were love triangles, so we have to discuss them, I guess. So, first of all, how did you feel about Frey and his cousin? <laughs> I was ready to call the police. Like, <laughs> Appropriate response. A plus plus. Correct plan of action. Um, <laughs> so what did you think about the possibility of Frey and Alice? It, I, it felt like way too forced. Like, I feel like obviously her type is a lot more calm and like consistent if you're looking at Kyo. Like, he's such an impressive Lotus Master, but I just don't think that they're like right for each other. No. Right. I think he's also perpetuating what happened to him with Ida. Oh, you're Ooh. right. That's the exact same age difference. Oh, ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just kind of like. That was visceral no. for me. I forgot about the age difference. <laughs> I did too until just now. Oh, my goodness. No. Ugh. Yeah. Oh. And I think Alice is just. I, him saying that Alice got him out of it, I, I just. I think. You know what? Everyone needs therapy. I, <laughs> yes. I feel like Frey need he needs it. He he needs it because the way that Kyo was worried about becoming an abuser because his dad abused his mom is actually low key what happened with Frey. But Frey is yeah. not as agonized over it, or at least we aren't able to delve in deep into it. Mm-hmm. For him to realize, like, hey, what happened between you and your cousin? First of all, that's your cousin. But second of all, like, that age difference, she needs to go to jail. Like, your un- the uncle being upset about this engagement and not about the fact that this child was being taken advantage of is the problem. It doesn't matter if they're still in their teens. That age, like, one was an adult and one clearly, like, wasn't. So I feel like Frey, rather than needing Alice, he needs therapy that is fair i love that the one character who does go to therapy in this manga that we know about is mayura and she only goes once and then alice comes home one day and is like i thought you were supposed to be at therapy and she's like well what am i supposed to say at therapy my sister told me to disappear and then i was sucked into a portal of darkness like no i'm not gonna (laughs) (laughs) oh man she should come up with some kind of allegory, though, so that she can yeah. at least process it. Right. <laughs> work on it, Myra. Work on it. Right. Like, Journal about it, girl. <laughs> right. Because it's just like, I think, I mean, her therapy was also needed because it's just like my sister wanted my boyfriend. So I wanted to destroy the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little concerning. Right. Because it's like, I mean, what do what do we have to do with it? Like... Right. My boyfriend said he wants to break up with me, and I'm just like, no. It's like, Ugh. no. Everybody go. Consent? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody go. That's that's fair. The, um. So Kyo and Mayura, I, we did touch on this earlier, where it's like Mayura is clearly super into Kyo. Kyo clearly is like Mayura is a great friend and wants to date me. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Eh, Shruggy? No. Yeah. I think I said everything I needed to earlier about it. It's just not meant to be. Do we ship? Do we like Kyo and Alice? I do, personally. <laughs> You're like, I love their dynamic. I their do. Romance. It's so <laughs> wholesome and pure. Oh, these pure yeah. little light children. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's cute. I think one I don't I don't know. I'm being too realistic. I think you know <laughs> them I'm like liking each land other. Over here. <laughs> yeah, this right? is a shoujo manga based loosely on Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> right, right. Loosely. Right. I need to suspend my disbelief. So suspending my disbelief, yes, I think that it's a very cute romance. I feel that I wonder, I guess, more on Kyo's side. It's just like, okay, you like Alice. Now that your your life is no longer in peril, you still like Alice, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I'm just, I'm just saying. Because it's like, they were in peril, and then he was just like, I don't like you, sister. I actually like you. But do you really like Alice, or do you need more people who are delving deep into your life? Like, is that just another friendship thing? I think that's, like, where I was mentally going with it. Because, I mean, he is attracted to Alice, and he kisses her and all of that. So it's like, yes. But then 
Oh, like I said, it's like maybe the life peril thing being there just accelerated his feelings or helped him realize it faster. Um, it's just going back to that archetype of he's the type of person that you would think would like everybody mm-hmm. based off of how he interacts with people. So it's just like, OK, I know he likes Alice because he physically kissed her a lot or like twice. Uh Oh, three times. I, I I thought that honestly, in kind of a kind of a screwed up way, that I shouldn't say screwed up. It was just like in an unfortunate way, rather, that Kyo realized that he had feelings for Alice only through trying to date Mayura. Like he realized, oh, I don't really feel this way towards this person, but I'm having all of these thoughts towards this other person in my life and it just happens to be her sister and it was just really unfortunate that's just i guess that's how i interpreted it right oh my gosh he's like prince charles (laughs) i mean king charles he's a king now i forgot yeah he's a king gosh we're gonna get canceled because of this (laughs) don't cancel me okay i just we're in the u.s okay i You have no authority over us. <laughs> right. The monarchy. What what monarchy? We don't know about that here. Uh, <laughs> um, no, King Charles, he he married Diana, but he actually dated her older sister first. Oh. And then stopped and then started dating Diana. But I mean, he's he has a little he's kind of less toxic. So in that way, because we all yeah. know how that played out. Um, I was like, <laughs> no, I I agree though. I thought the little bit that we got in the beginning of the story, like before he started dating either of them, showed his clear preference for Alice, or like at least that he he thought about her more than it seemed like he should, given the circumstances. Like, yeah. so I, I thought that was genuine i just yeah it's just the impetus of mayura having to confess to him and then alice being the one who's not truthful about her feelings in the beginning towards him and being like you should date my sister because yolo you don't know maybe and that kicking off the whole process like i think they would be fine not when their life is in peril but i'm also like well alice is 50 and so they will break up inevitably (laughs) yeah yeah the possibility of them being together forever is super slim yeah realistically if i'm being realistic in my shoujo manga which question mark question mark question mark (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah is there anyone you wish was a real ship i don't feel like this one offers a lot of good like alternate ships but you know you could put frey and kyo together (laughs) <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Frey and an anonymous woman post his therapy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I want happiness yeah. for Frey, but in this specific way. <laughs> yeah. I ship uh, Billy and whoever his fiance is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of it. I don't know. Right, yeah, I can't really enough. think of any alternate ships. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think we've we've mostly done it. Are oh, there wait, any... wait. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, wait, wait. Alice and and Lo Tucson. Although that would be an even worse age gap. That would not be Lo like Tucson hundreds of years. <laughs> right. <laughs> you looked good though. You were like, <laughs> you're like they look good together. Look good. <laughs> Why not? You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ultimate uh, OTP right there. <laughs> that chip. All right, well, are there any uh, uh, final thoughts here? I really like, so the editor of Alice 19th is Frances E. Well, and she had editor remarks after, like, every volume, and I thought she did a really good job, like, evaluating the feelings that like within each volume and like sort of touching on like the important themes and points. And I also like that like in volume six, she referenced uh, Synchronized Sinking by the Luxmiths, which I had never heard before 
today because I listened to it today. <laughs> and like within the lyrics, they talked about how like a problem shared is a problem solved. And so she used that quote to say that like it's good to share the issues that you have with people you love because then you'll be able to solve whatever they are like easier. And so I thought that was a really great sentiment. So yeah. No, well, now we'll all have to go listen to the song because I have not listened to the song. I swear. Very mellow. Was, very mellow. Okay. Yeah. Gotta, yeah, put me in the vibe. <laughs> I got to be in the right vibe. Well, everyone, thanks for listening to Shoujo and Tell. Comments, questions, constructive criticism, concerns. Need to gush about your OTP? Email Shoujo and Tell at gmail.com or leave a comment on the episode's YouTube page. We're at Shoujo and Tell on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Uh, Chica, where can people find you and your work on the internet? Uh, you guys can find me at Chica Supreme. That is Chica with a K um, on Twitter and also on Instagram. Uh, and you can also find me at Shoujo Sunday and check out our podcast, Shoujo Sunday. We have a good time with our ice cream puns. I know you guys will love it. Y'all love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love yeah. the dedication to the ice cream puns. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Gianna, what about you? Yes, apart from at Shoujo Sunday, you can find me at Gianna underscore Luna underscore across socials, particularly most active on Twitter and Instagram. And that's Gianna with one N, by the way. I'm also determined to release music in 2023. We shall Ooh. see. <laughs> yes! Ooh, I like it. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so I hope... Big. Twitter still exists in 2023, maybe? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's going to suck for my podcast if it doesn't, but thanks, Elon Musk. <laughs> Are you excited every time you see a new episode from us? If so, please consider leaving a rating on Apple Podcasts. This will help the show reach more hearts, or at least ears. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next time for either Man of Many Faces or Duke Leon Clamp School Defenders by, you guessed it, Clamp. So I will be doing those episodes with Asher, and that is only if 2023 doesn't try to kill me as much as 2022 did. So stay tuned if I to see if I am still alive. Bye! <laughs>